Have you seen this card? It hasn't been around the Yu-Gi-Oh card game for 15 years. Which means if Elemental Hero Aeroneos was a person, it'd be almost old enough to drive. Instead it's flown away. Off to be with the other cover monsters to have not received reprints yet. Elemental Hero Aeroneos was the cover monster for the 2007 set Strike of Neos. And while it's not the only cover monster to not be reprinted, it's certainly the one most players care about. I mean, have you seen these prices? $100 for a first edition print? There's a stark contrast between Aeroneos and some of these other forgotten cover monsters. The next highest is Heart Earth Dragon, which is roughly half the price of Aeroneos. All the way down to the bottom rung, where it's a sadder state of affairs. Oh. Uh, sorry guys. This is what makes Aeroneos different from all these other monsters. The players care about it more, and it shows in the price. Which is a message that Konami hasn't received very well yet. I want my bird. A bird? You want a bird? I want my bird. Aeroneos is cool. It's a hummingbird superhero and one of the most popular archetypes in the game. In terms of overall popularity, I'd say it's second only to the original Duel Monsters era monsters. Like Exodia, Dark Magician, and Blue Eyes White Dragon. Which is why it's so baffling he hasn't been reprinted yet, especially considering all his other Neos brethren have. It's not just to the physical card game either. Its absence is felt in the two current Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, Master Duel and Duel Links. You can see all the other Neos monsters, but not Air Neos for some reason. Elemental Hero Air Neos has been banished to the Shadow Realm for a long time. We're going to put on our tinfoil hats and fly straight through this cloud of conspiracy theories and see if we can figure out why Elemental Hero Air Neos has been left in the junk drawer of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Let's begin. Among the Elemental Heroes, Neos is a little different. In lore, Neos itself is an alien who can fuse with a variety of different monsters. Air Neos itself is the specific combination of Vanilla Neos and Neospatian Air Hummingbird. It's just one of 16 Neos fusion monsters in the TCG. Discounting the three newest ones, which were printed just a few years ago, every other one has received at least one reprint, most of them about three to four years after their introduction. This includes the two monsters that debuted alongside Air Neos in 2007, Elemental of Heroes Grand Neos and Glow Neos, each seeing a reprint in 2011's Legendary Collection 2. As we go forward with the possible reasons for why Aeroneos has been kept from us for so long, keep in mind it is possible there's a mix of reasons or even no reason at all. I reached out to Konami and asked them if they could comment on this question, and to my surprise they replied. I was very happy to see them respond even though they basically declined to comment. This is what they said. I ain't saying nothing. I understand. How is your mother? I'm very sorry to say we have no information we can share regarding decisions made for the game. Choices for the game are coordinated between multiple offices and countries. There's no singular answer for why choices are made for cards or features of the game. You know, you could be a little more helpful. Konami is famously tight-lipped as a company regarding their policies and behind-the-scenes work. It's partly why research for this video is so difficult, as most of it is conjecture pulled from facts and observations. The biggest conspiracy by far is that there's some sort of copyright or legal issue centered around the artwork for Air Neos itself. The most compelling piece of evidence for this theory is the artwork for a new card that was unveiled in the OCG. This is instant contact. Looking at the artwork, we can see the vanilla Neos posing with all his fusion counterparts. All of them except for Air Neos. This scene might look familiar if you watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, specifically Season 3. The art for this card is directly lifted from this shot, from one of the anime intros. Hmm, it's all very suspicious. I'm not a detective, but I'd say this looks like direct evidence that Konami is actively trying to scrub Air Neos from history altogether. Like, why else would they take it out? Let's talk about card artwork for a moment. You'll notice the bottom of the card says 1996, Kazuki Takahashi, who is the creator of the franchise, but he doesn't do the artwork for the individual cards. Other trading card games like Magic and Pokemon credit the artist directly on the card, but not Yu-Gi-Oh, which is unfortunate, and it's actually pretty difficult to find out who drew what. We're not entirely sure how Yu-Gi-Oh card artwork is made, like if it's mostly done with an in-house team of artists, or if they primarily work with third-party freelancers. Probably a bit of both, but word around the Reddit rumor mill is that Konami themselves are pretty strict on their non-disclosure agreements. Those are abbreviated NDA if you ever see it in the wild, so it's hard to find anything concrete about who does the art for specific cards. Here's an example. Here's a Twitter thread from an artist in Chile named Gonzalo Ordonez with a picture of the card Cosmo Goodwitch, with the caption saying, it looks nice. I translated this Twitter thread using Google Translate. Someone in the thread asked him if he had a list of Yu-Gi-Oh cards he worked on, that he'd be interested in putting them up on the wiki. Ordonez responded saying he can't speak openly about it, but didn't say why. Could this be because of a possible NDA that he signed? Another commenter asked him if he did the artwork for Cosmo Goodwitch specifically, to which Ordonez replied with just a winky face. I interpret that as an answer in the affirmative, without actually explicitly saying yes. And, if we look through his Instagram, we can definitely see there are some stylistic similarities between the Cosmo card he tweeted about and the rest of his portfolio. I mean, look at this. Back to Aeroneos, it's pretty easy to imagine a scenario where they used a freelance artist to do the art and discovered something nefarious that it, they would kibosh the whole thing and start from scratch. See the example of Mad Lobster, 
where it's assumed allegations of plagiarism are the reason why this card got a second artwork. Here's the original Mad Lobster card from the set Cybernetic Revolution. It got changed to this after it was noticed it shared an awful lot of details with the artwork from a card game called El Tio. That card's name is Sea Claw. If you look at the official website for Mad Lobster, you'll see its artwork has been updated and it's like the first iteration never happened. I suspect if Konami had an issue like this with Air Neos, then it would have been dealt with in a similar manner, more so because of its prolific nature as a cover card. But that appears to not be the case. The webpage dedicated to Air Neos on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! website shows the artwork we all know and love, and if there was some sort of copyright issue then I'm not sure they would want to display the image at all. The plot thickens when we look at the card Dimension Explosion, which was printed just a year after Strike of Neos. It's possible any potential issues with the art weren't known to Konami at the time. Also, while Air Neos is missing from the current crop of Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, it was part of the card pool for Legacy of the Duelist in a sequel, Link Evolution. This game was made by a third-party developer called Other Ocean Interactive. So it's possible Air Neos' appearance in these games was a mistake, an oopsie-daisy because they weren't fully aware of the Air Neos history, if there is one. And if the issues are that Air Neos resembles something too closely, then what is it allegedly copying? I initially thought it sort of looked like the superhero Falcon from the Marvel comics, at least as far as the red suit and wings go but I don't think a red suit and wings is enough to make a plagiarism claim stick. If you have any thoughts about what you think Air Neos resembles, let me know in the comment section below. The grander conspiracy theory I have is that Konami realized they made a mistake in not reprinting Air Neos with the rest of the Neos fusions, but they're purposely holding onto the reprint to boost hype for an upcoming release. Let's look at Instant Contact again. If you zoom into the top left corner above Glow Neos, you can see something that looks like a wing, but it's not clear whose wing it is. It could possibly just be a sloppy error, but I don't think so. It seemed if they went through the trouble to remove Aeroneos in the first place, they would have taken his wing too. I think it might be a sign that they're aware of Aeroneos' absence, and they've put the wings in as a hint of things to come. Let's look at the set Instant Contacts coming out in. It's called Power of the Elements, which is going to be released in Japan later this April. The set is focusing a lot on the elemental heroes, and there will likely be slots for higher rarity reprints from older sets. We've seen them reach into their back catalog before for sets like Dawn of Majesty, where Stardust Dragon got reprinted in the Starlight Rarity. I think this would be the most likely venue for an Air Neos reprint. This last theory does assume that Konami is some kind of master marketer and is keeping an Air Neos reprint around for a rainy day, thinking they could tantalize the community with hints and video games and other card artworks to build hype for its triumphant return. And as far-fetched as this sounds, it makes sense that there's no other legal holds on the card. Air Neos is kind of the perfect candidate to focus a long con around. It's a cover monster, so that's going to get the attention of the player base, especially after videos like this are published, fueling the speculation about why it went missing in the first place. If this isn't their plan, then it should be. I'm going to get into some fun little trivia bits about Air Neos in this next section, but before I do, I want to pay some bills with a quick ad read. If there is one thing that tabletop gamers can agree on, it's the importance of having a good set of dice. Dice with character. That's why I get my dice for my wife. But you can get yours from her Etsy shop at the Sapphire Narwhal. Check these dice out, they're beautiful. And they're the perfect companion to a deck I'm building. Check them out. That's the Sapphire Narwhal, link in the description. Now back to your regularly scheduled Yu-Gi-Oh! content. While it's true we haven't seen an Air Neos reprint in the TCG, there is an exception in Japan, where they got a box set called Master Collection 3, which featured Air Neos as a promo card in Secret Rare Foiling. In case you're not aware, there are effectively two different versions of the card game. In Japan there's the OCG, which stands for Official Card Game, and they generally get card releases a few months before everyone else. Everyone else plays the TCG, which stands for Trading Card Game. This particular set never made it to the TCG, so we've only got the Ultra and Ultimate Rare versions of the card to work with. Did you know there's a one turn kill strategy in the game focused around Air Neos? Its effect is that it gains attacking points if your life points are lower than your opponents, equal to the difference. Here's how the basic combo works. Activate a hero lives, paying half your life points to summon Elemental Hero Prisma from your deck. Activate its effect to send Vanilla Neos to the graveyard to take its name. Then normal summon either Hummingbird or another Prisma, activating its effect to give itself Air Hummingbird's name. Contact fuse the two of them, summoning out Air Neos. Since you paid half your life points for a hero lives, Air Neos gains 4000 attack, giving it 6500 total. After that, you just need to make up the difference somehow, and then you can win. Even from the perspective of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! 10 years ago, this combo would be pretty inconsistent. But it does exist, and that's pretty neat. And lastly, there's an Italian airliner called Neos Air. If we mix the words around a little bit, it spells Air Neos. I originally had this as one of my theories for why the reprint hasn't happened yet, but I discounted it pretty quickly after the second draft. The premise behind it is that because the names are so similar, it could spell legal trouble for Konami. I don't think this makes a lot of sense though, because things share names all the time and it's not an issue. Take another airliner, Delta for example. They share a name with Delta Faucet and Delta Dental. Totally different names, all use the same descriptor. Even if this was an issue, there's a history of changing card names to make them fit archetypes better or to smooth out some past edginess. Think Red Eyes Bee Dragon becoming Red Eyes Black Dragon, or the card After Genocide becoming After the Struggle. They could have renamed it Elemental Hero Bird Neos, or Air Bird Neos, or Humming Neos. I think you get the point. 
I hope we see all Nuts here Air and Neos swoop back into our lives soon, though I'll be sad to see the speculation end. I think it's fun to theorize about these sorts of things. What do you think though? Do you think we'll see Air Neos come back in the Power of the Elements set? Maybe in before? Possibly ever? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, you've been watching Baton Pass. Thank you for watching.